Good morning, everyone. Today we have a great opportunity here to hear from a few speakers from our own Creative Mornings, and I get the uh, privilege of introducing Candy to everyone. Candy Jones is a cer certified professional career and life coach who works as a career coach in, at Mutual of Omaha and is also the owner of Coaching with Candy. She offers career coaching, accountability coaching, and is a motivational speaker. She was a recent recipient of the Greater Omaha Chamber of Young Professionals 2020 Change Maker Award. And having had the opportunity to jump on a call with her this week with, with Kim, just realized how motivational her perspective is <clears throat> and her desire to help others. So today we get to hear from her. She's going to talk to us about how she found a way to ensure her trauma and life experiences continu continue to fuel her passion. And she's sharing her, her lessons authentically with us today. And I think that's a huge um, value to us and an opportunity for us to be inspired as well. Candy, before you begin, I, I think you deserve a really fitting applause. So I'm going to play a soundtrack of, of very um, boisterous applause for you. Can we, can we give some love to Candy as she comes to share? <laughs> I love it. I love it. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you for having me. I'm super excited to be here and share with all of you. And I'm hoping in this time that we have that I can leave you not with all the answers, but perhaps a different one, which is exactly what I'm going for. And I found that many times you are exactly where you need to be. So if you are here, this is exactly the space you're supposed to be in. So whatever we say this morning, I hope that you receive it and that you take something, that one point and, and share it and take it with you. So first, I'd like you to just think about a scenario, right? So think about a 12-year-old girl as she watches her assailant we uh, leave a bedroom window. The same window that he actually came in with is the same window that he exits. And as she lays there crying and hurting and wondering, you know, why, what is the point? Um, she's asking about purpose. She's asking, why did this happen to me? And a lot of the times that's what purpose kind of boils down to. It's that whole, why me? Why this? Why now? What's going on? Right? And so I'm sure you can pick any number of scenarios or situations that could fit that particular scenario that I provided you, maybe something different. Um, you can think of something that applies to what we're going through today. Think about the moment we're in. Think about the pandemic, how we're all asking why. Why us? Why our nation? The current situation? Um, and I think we're all asking that, right? Um, what are we going to do? And in these moments, when the whole idea of purpose becomes real for us, we start to search for our understanding and our meaning behind tragedy. So we search for purpose in our lives. We start to think about that word and we use it so loosely. I'm not sure we entirely all understand what it means, but if possible, I'd like to share at least what I think it means. Um, and then you can take those key points with you if that's okay. So in that scenario I painted for you earlier, you can probably guess that the person I was talking about was me, right? So I was that 12 year old girl that was crying on a basement floor, questioning all that I ever was and all that I ever would be after a sexual assault. So that little girl um, has found her purpose and has essentially taken a very traumatic experience and used that to really create the change that she wants to see in her world, right? So I used that moment to not only heal myself, but also take that moment and realize over time that it was much bigger than me and that I'm using that experience to heal everyone around me. So um, what I did is I decided to use a tragedy and spend the rest of my life here on earth doing something um, to create programs, to create um, awareness, and to inspire other people to have that same way of thinking. So within my own organization, within my business, within my community, that's what I'm doing. So in this moment, when the world is chaotic, this is your moment to decide your why, right? To figure out what matters to you. And not your why in that cheeky sense, because a lot of people ask, what's your why? What's your purpose? And I'm not talking about that. I'm talking about the very real meaningful why. Um, to take dark moments and bring light to them. And so I'd like to stay there for just a little bit. So before I had purpose, what I did is I allowed myself to stay in dead in relationships. I allowed myself to stay in abusive situations. And I allowed myself to be in unfulfilling careers. How many of you are there or have been there? And it's okay if those don't apply. I'm sure something will. And if any of that sounds familiar, I want you to understand that I know all too well how tragedy can sometimes create this existence for you. Um, and I've coached many, many people, so I know how you can sink into a life of both being abused and becoming an abuser, believe it or not, just based on not having direction, um, purpose, or passion. So if you don't have purpose or passion for anything, it makes you fall victim to everything. And I'll say that again. If you don't have a passion or purpose for anything, it makes you fall victim to everything. 
And I know how easy it is to get stuck in a life that makes no sense, much like a hamster wheel, right? You're just going with no real direction in your life. So because I was operating from a place of pain and from trauma and from low self-esteem and from hurt, um, I lacked the motivation to do much. And my choices were reflective of that. Have you been there? Your choices are reflective of how you feel about yourself and your situation. So if you were to ask me the first point of finding your purpose, I'm going to tell you to find your healing. What about you, about your life, about your space, about your decisions are keeping you up at night? What haven't you dealt with? And nothing in your life will make sense until you make sense of that. So if I were using this particular moment in our time as an example, I would say, what is this pandemic showing you? How are you navigating your personal relationships? Um, how are you responding and reacting to all the change around you? What are your family and friends doing? Or how do you feel about them? Do you have friends? What does that look like for you? And what can you learn that will make you show up a better person? That's where your passion begins. That's where that happens, right? So once I finally started to deal with what broke me in my life, I was able to take that same energy and decide to put it towards a life that made sense. So my pain as a child became the reason I coach. What can you do that becomes your reason, right? And I didn't know that at the time. I didn't just get here, right? Um, I, I had to go through some things. And what happened, I'll tell you one scenario about how this happened for me is I was in my office. And I remember I broke down crying after someone, a colleague of mine, um, chose to, to share with me about her rape. I remember in that very moment how I had spent my entire life building a career where I showed up to work in these fancy suits and dresses with manicured nails and done toes and saying all these big words I didn't know in these corporate spaces, but yet I had all this major-ish going on in my life that was impacting the true way I could show up. And if I didn't deal with it, it was going to destroy me. So there's no way I truly knew what I wanted to do with my life until I got real about that, right? Get real about that. And once I was able to say, okay, here's who I really am, and this is how I want to show up in every space and in every room, that's how I started to do better, I started to be better, and I started to go further. So I'm not going to tell you this transformation happened with a snap of a finger or like this Oprah moment or like I do want to be her, by the way. She's going to have to be replaced one day, right, friends? So I won't tell you that this transformation happened with a snap of the finger or a lifetime special or any of that. I did not suddenly wake up and become this new person. Life is still happening around me. What I'm telling you is I started to find purpose in dark times. I started to figure out who I am and how I wanted to show up. And this journey is so unique to you. It will always be unique to you. Please do not waste so much time comparing your life to television and social media. Please do not map, please do not measure like your success based on what you see around other people. Use this time to think about you, who you are, maybe who you were as a child. Who were you before life happened? What did you dream about? Who did you see when there were no limitations of fear about who you were, right? What happened? So I used to want to teach. I used to think I wanted to be a teacher. I used to line up all my stuffed animals in my room. My mother can contest to this, and I used to teach all my babies. And so look at me now, right? Having gone through all I've been through in my life, I am still kind of teaching. I got back to what I wanted to do by going through a lot of pain to get there. I felt like life had given up on me, so I almost gave up on it. But your purpose is just beyond grace and forgiveness. So what didn't you get right? So what you didn't get it right, you messed up. Uh, you know, life didn't go quite as planned. We're dealing with this pandemic. Life is crazy right now. Yes, it hurts, and you might wonder why. But look back on all those re all those moments, all those reasons, all those opportunities, and create space. No, it didn't go exactly how you planned, not even close to how you planned. But in healing yourself, you're going to welcome your purpose back. You're going to find another way to do what you love, right? So deal with the tough stuff, my friend. Then find your way back or find another way to do what you love, right? So here's what I'd like to leave you with today. Maybe finding your purpose isn't necessarily about you, but it is finding your way to contribute. And I'm not ignoring very real life problems, people having lost their jobs, seeing the streams of income, concerned about, you know, what tomorrow is going to look like, their health, their families. I'm not ignoring that. What I'm asking you to do today is be, I'm not asking you to be self-serving or selfish. I'm not asking you that. But what I am telling you to do is take these dark moments or any dark moments, heal, recognize your gifts that either lie in wait or have manifested as a result of all you've gone through and experienced and use them to contribute to this world in a very real way. Don't make it so complicated. Don't make it so complicated. Sometimes your purpose is simply being exactly who you are without fear and then recognizing all it took to get you. So here's my ask of you today. Pick a problem, any problem, and start planning how to solve it. You're like, yeah, okay, sounds big, right? But look at it this way. Until you find something that gets you riled up enough to do something about it, why are you here? 
trust me, there's plenty of mess to choose from. Choose one, right? I chose domestic violence and sex trafficking and sexual trauma. These are the problems I care about and want to do something about because of the, the, my personal connections, yes, but they matter to me. So even when things aren't quite right in my world and things are tough, I sit on boards and work in my community on those things because they matter to me. So what matters to you? Could it be that your purpose truly is about your contribution? Maybe it's not about you at all. So now I'm not going to solve the nation's largest problems all alone, right? I'm going to need all of your help and we're going to all have to do this together. But the feeling I have when I go to sleep at night, knowing I'm doing something, I can't describe it. It is very freeing. It is my light in dark spaces. And I encourage you to think outside of yourself to find your purpose. It is bigger than you, my friend. And don't just find your light, but be one too. Thanks for having me. It was so great, Candy. Thank you for sharing and being vulnerable with us about your own experiences. And I think all of us benefit so much from hearing someone willing to see the positives in moments of difficulty like this. And you're such an inspiration to us. And we're fortunate to have you part of our community. And we're excited to spend some time a little bit later in a breakout kind of digesting together uh, what we heard from Candy. Our second speaker today is uh, a good friend too. This is Naomi. And it's funny, Naomi was, <clears throat> uh, not funny, not funny at all, but a few years ago, we were going to have Naomi uh, share at one of our events, our birthday party uh, in, was that 2018, I would say, a couple years ago. <clears throat> and we had a blizzard. And so she made her did her best to try and make it to the event, but a lot of us were not able to make it and she wasn't able to either. But we're so fortunate that she's back and able to share with us today. Naomi is a Nebraska native, moved between five different cities in the US as well as overseas to Delhi, India, and Sing Singapore. And in the midst of it all, she's learned to thrive in chaos and find her purpose. In 2017, she moved back to Omaha where her story first began. Naomi is passionate about community building and empowering others to thrive, not just survive in the places they call home. After some time as program director at Habitat for Humanity of Omaha, Naomi is still on a mission to address affordable housing and stability for the youth in our city. And Naomi, we're so excited to have you sharing. And of course, I've got your uh, applause to start you out here too. So we'll get that going. Everyone, let's give a warm welcome to Naomi. That's actually, the, the applause is like, it's a really fun way to start. Thank you, Herbie. And I think it's kind of funny that, you know, two years ago, I wasn't able to show up because of ice. And then now two years later, we have this weird freak snow in the middle of April. So it's kind of fitting all the way around. Candy, thank you so much for um, sharing. And like Herbie said, being vulnerable. Um, it's kismet almost, I think, that we're both sharing together uh, because there's some overlap and some synergy. Um, I'm going to do mine a little differently. Kim's going to run some slides for me while I talk. Um, so I'll just start. In 1997, I was barely 20 years old. I was a single mom of a two-year-old boy. I had a good job as a paralegal, but I was one paycheck away from poverty. I, like Candy, habitually succumbed to bad relationships and consistently made poor decisions. I was the product of a mixed race marriage and subsequent divorce brought on by infidelity, and I was homeschooled long before it was legal. I had made up my mind to let that story be the direction for my life. My purpose was living inside of me. It always has been, but its voice had been quieted and hushed. I was on state and government assistance and desperately wanted a different path. I applied for Habitat for Humanity Omaha homeownership on a whim hoping to be accepted for a hand up and not a handout. Even though the selection committee thought I was much too young to be successful, they were willing to give me a shot. After completing my sweat equity hours and demonstrating my ability to pay, that's a photo of me learning how to hang soffit, I closed on my first home on 39th and Ames just before my 21st birthday. That opportunity for homeownership gave me the ability to rest and rejuvenate. It allowed me to begin to hear the calling of my purpose, and it allowed me to launch a trajectory that no one could have predicted. I was able to settle, and I think right now in the times that we're all going through, settle and being able to just calm and rest is something that's feeling a little hard. Uh, I was able to settle into my purpose, and I discovered my onlyness. My purpose is that spot only I can stand in because of my experience, my abilities, and my story. Over the years that would follow, I went from a single mother of one to a married mother of three, 
I left Omaha in 2003, and I've since lived in Florida, Georgia, Ohio twice, Virginia, and as Herbie mentioned, Singapore and New Delhi, India. Over the last 17 years, I've started to lean into my purpose to give fuel to things like writing a curriculum for an English language learning program in the Vivicon slums of New Delhi. I helped to raise over $2.4 million in one night for room to read in Singapore. I redefined culture and belonging at various organizations like the American Women's Association in New Delhi and numerous PTA boards in the United States. I also helped jumpstart initiatives like a buddy system for new students in an elementary school, a safe crosswalk project, high school senior spirit, and more. There's something called a red thread. I don't know if you've heard about this, but it's where we start to see the path and the journey of our lives begin to make sense. And in fact, Stephanie, who's on the call with us this morning, is the one who told me about the red thread. It's where we can see woven threads and intersection of purpose start to become clear. I found my red thread and realized that I exist to see the individual beauty and capacity in each person and opportunity. I then exist to connect those dots with a higher need and then light the fire of possibility and engagement. That's my purpose. My purpose opened the door to opportunities to mentor other unwed single moms here in Omaha. I created a business to bring families and community together called Rock and Todd in Cleveland. I piloted and founded an international online community of 17,000 plus individuals living outside their passport countries called I'm a Triangle. Most recently, I've built a thriving real estate practice where we focus on helping clients flourish in their new homes rather than just survive. So over 20 years have now passed since I first became a homeowner with Habitat for Humanity. And now I find myself right back in Omaha where my story began. I sat down to write a blog post one day about the full circle moments I've discovered, the connection of Habitat homeownership to my real estate business, the parallels of breaking the cycle of poverty and divorce with my ability to see the value that each individual brings to a situation. My onlyness as an other and how that correlates to my community building purpose, it all started to make sense. Amanda Brewer, the executive director of Habitat for Humanity Omaha, read that blog post and asked me for a coffee date. You see, Amanda was on staff at Habitat back in 1997 when I first applied for the program. We spent a morning catching up and I filled around in everything that I had been doing. What followed was a beautifully woven tapestry of purpose and kismet. I accepted a position at Habitat for Humanity and spent nearly two years shaping and designing the impact that I have in the affordable and stable housing space in this community, in Omaha, in the place I call home. What I know now, when I look back on my life, is that I don't need wealth, I don't need status to make a difference in other people's lives or in my community. I no longer need to use my past, that story, as a negative story of loss or of not enough. Instead, I can boldly jump into my story, knowing that it's a catalyst and a ripple effect splash for how I relate and connect to each other. It doesn't matter that I don't have a high school diploma, which I don't, or a college degree, which I don't. I am remarkably qualified to see a need and set out to fill it. My time overseas provided space for me to learn and lean into my purpose. It allowed me to discover the potent potential that I have inside of me and that you all have inside of you if only we're bold enough to unlock it. Returning home to Nebraska and my opportunity with Habitat for Humanity in Omaha offered me a chance to sit very squarely inside my purpose and gave me time to breathe action into that purpose. During these times that we're all in, that many of us are in, during this time that all of us are in, <laughs> it's definitely uncertain, but I believe that we can use the coming days to rediscover our purpose. Do you believe in the power of your own story or are you letting it be something that holds you back? Do you know how to signal and find others who can help you stand in your purpose? Creative Mornings is a community that's so perfect for this to be able to say what you're working on, say what help you need and what support you need and, and the Creative Mornings community is right there for you. Does it come naturally to you to spot and seek out opportunities for your purpose to truly be found and unleashed? I love what Candy said about there's enough mess to choose from in this world. You have to figure out what it is that you align with. What mess is it that you are so qualified by yourself within your purpose to help fix? By the way, I don't believe that you need to find your purpose, which is what so many talk about. You simply need to sidle up next to it, reintroduce yourself, and ask if it wants to go for a ride. Thank you.
I'll kick us off before if there's not a question right away. In our breakout, we were talking about during this um, pandemic, not being able to feel like you're contributing fully in the way that you thought you might be able to, um, whether it's because you're not able to financially contribute or you're not in a role that lets you feel like you're really launching yourself in. And so we were just talking about a really um, small doodling project to take an item in your house that only functions if every single part is contributing and let that just kind of marinate in you. Um, your part to play, whether it's supporting someone else, um, is important. So I just wanted to share that. Looks like if someone asked in the chat, curious if either of you are writing a memoir. Yes, actually. <laughs> I have started writing um, a book about my experience and the things that I've gone through. And so I hope to get that done. And I hope that you purchase <laughs> because I think it's going to be an amazing story. I have so much to say that has laid dormant for so long. So I'm excited to share that with all of you. And Naomi is writing one as well. <laughs> yes. We honestly, we all should be writing our memoirs. Looks like there's a little bit of lag, but um, I did want to say we had a, our breakout talked about, and we got caught off and we were talking about really good conversation. But one of the things I wanted to just share really quick, one of the questions was, was around like, you know, just walking in your purse or what's the one thing you want people to know about you. And I'm just going to share that one of the things that I think is most important is that you really start to live an authentic life. And I know people use that word a lot. But when I say authentic, I mean bringing all the pieces of you, the good, the bad, the ugly to the table, because that's really the only way that you're going to grow and that you're going to get through kind of the things that you're going through into that next level. We're all creatives here. And you can't possibly be as creative as your mind is going to allow you to be until you really start to explore all of those things that make you you. So I'm going to encourage you to take some time to really get real about all of those pieces um, and really start to bring those pieces forward. That's good, Candy. And I'll just piggyback on what you just said and then go into what Natalie just asked about what keeps us going on days when past traumas or experiences stick forefront in your mind. I will speak for myself um, that the, the act of writing, even if not in memoir, because memoir feels scary, it feels super ego driven, it feels like I'm going to write about my life, but it actually is just writing about the things that you've experienced so that others can see themselves in your story. Um, so for me, what keeps me going is literally writing through the trauma and the experiences because then it sometimes, I don't know, it lets me, it lets me step out of it being a story that holds me back and instead lets me step into a story that lets me find my other people that have gone through the same thing. I'm not the only person who homeschooled in the 1970s before it was legal in Nebraska, um, but I told myself that for years. Look at me, I'm, I, you know, here's my sad story because instead of, let me find the other people because there's others. It's a matter of, for me, it's, it's, it's not about me too anymore, you know. I actually started saying, now what? Naomi, there's a question for you in the chat uh, from Joel. How has your understanding of cross-cultural communication informed your thinking back in the States? Uh, how long do I have? <laughs> Um, that is, oh, Joel, that's such a great question, and it's nuanced. Um, I find it super fascinating that the what I would have thought was a need to understand cross-cultural communication, like in India and Singapore and Asia, I actually am finding it even more necessary as I come back to rural Nebraska. Um, you know, Omaha is a greater metro, um, but we have so much cross-cultural stuff happening inside our area, inside our city. Um, and so I think that it's been you know, really important for me to use that learning that I, I, I absorbed and learned in Asia and help straddle the middle, um, whether it's political with parties, whether it's backgrounds, whether it's uh, First Americans, Native Omahans, um, stepping, helping people find that middle point of having a dialogue start is important. I think that would be my very short answer to understanding cross-cultural communication. It's not just 
um, country by country. It's inside each of our communities. I think the only last thing I would say, I touched on it super briefly, um, the concept of onlyness and signaling. It sounds like they sound a little um, woo, but there's a book by Nilifer Merchant called The Power of Onlyness. And in it, she talks about the concept of signaling. And it's almost like if you were to walk around with like whatever your um, attributes or your traits or your weird or your quirks were like on this scrolling thing above you and others could see that. You know, so I'm walking around and I'm saying I'm biracial. I was homeschooled my entire uh, education. And I don't have a di diploma so that others who find that would be able to I'd, I'd signal to them. Um, that doesn't happen. We can't do that. So I think my only parting words of encouragement um, to be able to sidle up to your purpose and to rediscover what that is. Sometimes you actually have to do the action of, of signaling. You need to you know, go into the creative mornings um, community and find others that um, are interesting to you and reach out. Um, find your people on Instagram and, and reach out only through the process of signaling and then connecting um, do we find community. So this was great. Thank you all for showing up and watching. All right. Thank you to you both again, Candy and Naomi. It was very inspiring today. I think it was a message we all really needed to hear right now. Um, so we appreciate you sharing. Thanks for being here, everybody. If you want to stay and chat, some of the team and I, I'm sure, will be happy to, to hang out for a while longer. So otherwise, we'll see you next time. So thank you.